At the end of this video, we'll take a look at Mad Ramp's innovative pivoting ramp system, the safer, easier way to transport your ATVs and snowmobiles. Stick around. Before we begin, I'd like to give a quick shout out to our friends at the historic Lancaster Motel in Lancaster, New Hampshire. The Lancaster Motel has been serving snowmobilers since the 60s and they are the perfect eastern trail riding destination for snowmobilers young and old. The Lancaster Motel is right on Corridor Trail 5 in Lancaster, New Hampshire with plenty of parking for vehicles, sleds and trailers. Plus, the Lancaster Motel is within walking distance of Crane's Snowmobile Museum, plus restaurants, shopping, entertainment and more. Click the link in the description to learn more about the Lancaster Motel. Good evening and welcome to the podcast. I'm really glad you're here tonight. Nice to be back after a wonderful holiday season. Hope everyone had a wonderful holiday season. We sure did. Uh, we've got a really nice lineup for you tonight of uh, vintage snowmobile entertainment. Um, and we're going to be getting to that in just a moment. Before we do, though, I want to make sure that everything is working properly. So if you can see my face and hear my voice, I'm going to ask you to make a comment uh, and let me know where you're viewing this from. Also, let me know whether you're a first-time viewer or a regular viewer. And to our first-time viewers here tonight, I thank you very much for giving this a chance, taking a look and see what we're up to. And I hope that you'll decide to come back here every week. We do this podcast every Thursday night. And if you are a regular viewer, I thank you so much for coming in every Thursday night to, to spend some time with us. It really means a lot, and it helps to grow this program. If you do enjoy this, I ask you, if you possibly can, to share this either on your profile or on a friend's profile who might enjoy this, or also uh, share it as a private message uh, to help get the word out about this podcast. Uh, anything you can do along that line would help enormously to uh, get some momentum for this podcast. Uh, so let's get started. We've got... Um, this is what we've got tonight. We're going to have Remy Mas Masicot on here. Let's bring him on uh, right now. I'm getting him. Here we go. How are you doing tonight, Remy? Can you hear me okay? Hi, people. Hi, Mike. Hi. Nice to see you. I appreciate your coming on tonight. Now, um, Remy is uh, yeah. from Rivers, Quebec. Thanks. And Remy has a, a website. I'm going to show you his website. It's a website uh, called Bring Back the Ski Do Elan. And I think that's a great idea. Um, what can you tell us about that, Remy? Do you want to tell us about your project? Yeah, um, it started uh, this summer when I was building my uh, four stroke Elan. And I asked me uh, why did Bombardier didn't make it uh, again? And. Uh, 
I think it's a good idea because uh, to the snowmobile are very powerful and not very adept for young people. And uh, the Yeren is uh, 50 years old and they are, and people want them. I, so uh, I think it's a good idea to bring them back. Yeah, for sure. I totally agree. I think uh, it would be nice to have a snowmobile with, with a low price point and something that's just as light and, and easy and agile to use as the Elan was. Those little Elans would go everywhere, uh, anywhere that these big, powerful yep. sleds would go. And I think these powerful sleds are great. The modern powder sleds are great. But uh, I do believe that there's a place for something like the Elan, something really lightweight and inexpensive. Uh, seems like that would be a hit with the ice fishermen as well. Um, now, while we're talking about this, Remy, I'm going to yep. pose a question to the audience to get some feedback. Um, so to the audience that's watching this, yep. tell me what you think. Would you like to see ski -Doo bring back uh, the old 1995-1996, which is the last year of production? Would you like to see them just retool that model year and bring that back? Or would you like to see ski -Doo reinvent the ELAN and do a completely modern interpretation of the ELAN? So I'm going to ask you guys to post your comments and see see what you guys are thinking about that and see if we can get some consensus as to whether which way people are leaning with that. Um, and before we do, Remy, I'm going to ask you to hold on a second. We've got, I want to see what we've had come in for, for comments of people watching here. We've got John Spranger from uh, yeah. Fl Flame, Wisconsin. We've got Andre Depati. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble reading the screen here. Harry Batdorf from International Falls, Minnesota. Perry Kements from Pembina, North Dakota. Jim Layton, a good friend of ours. How are you doing, Jim? He's uh, wishing us Happy New Year's from the state of Maine. We've got Sam Field on. Uh, he said, good evening. It looks good and sounds good. Oh, I can put these right on the screen here, which is nice while I'm doing this. Um, we've got Bill Cook from upstate New York. We have Scott Verdon from Michigan. Uh, Richard Murphy, first-time viewer from Drakeit, Massachusetts. Welcome, Richard. I hope you enjoy this, and I hope you decide to come back and, and join us every week. We have a great time doing this. Uh, we've got Mark Mark Marotsky, first-time viewer from Minnesota. Thanks for coming on, Mark. We really appreciate that. We've got Ray Nelson from Cumberland, Wisconsin, first-time viewer. Thank you so much, Ray, for giving us a shot and see what's going on here. Um, we've got Kurt Isaacson from Lemoore, North Dakota. Uh, John Panuski from Anoka, Minnesota. Did I read that twice? I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, we've got Brian Robillard, a good friend of ours. Uh, Brian is on here every week. We really appreciate you coming on. And Brian is from Putnam, Connecticut. Uh, John Baird, first time viewer. Thanks for coming on, John. Appreciate it. Hope you'll join us every week. Tom Gregory from um, Armada, Michigan. Bill Desjardins from Alberta, Canada. We've got Scott Brown from the Boondocks of North uh, North Dakota. Brad Curtis, sounding good, he says. Uh, he Brad is from Syracuse, New York. Jeff Brain from Lee, Massachusetts. Cecil Fossil, first-time viewer from Northwest Minnesota. Thanks for coming on, Cecil. Appreciate your coming and checking us out. Uh, Lyndon Dewey, sounds good, from Stillman Valley, Illinois. Andre Depati from Quebec. Now, there's a fellow Quebecer there for you, Remy. So that's cool. Uh, we've got a uh, we've got Jeff Nix, regular <laughs> viewer, checking in from North Liberty, Iowa. And yeah, we, and we've got a lot of Quebecers. If you're in, and by the way, if um, we've got a lot of Quebecers that view this, so if you are from Quebec, please uh, say hello and and mention that you are watching from Quebec. Uh, we've got uh, Jeff Spranger Jr. from Spans, Wisconsin. Rick Libby, first-time viewer, St. Andrews, New Brunswick. And I lost my place here on the – if I scroll, it really goes by. I apologize. Okay, here we go. Joe Lewis from Jackson, Maine. Marsha Lowe. I don't know if that's a person or a place, but Marsha Lowe, Jackson, Maine. Thanks for coming on. We really appreciate it. Lyndon Dewey, regular viewer from Stillman Valley, Illinois. Bill Cook, uh, yes, he's seen the price of the Elan go up ten a thousand dollars. Okay, we've got um, Aaron Selly from Cabot, Vermont. I've met Aaron at some of the vintage snowmobile shows. He's got some really nice sleds. Aaron, we'd love to have you come on here live sometime. By the way, 
Uh, let's have a side conversation about that. Send me an email if you would, uh, if you'd like to come on, do some show and tell with some of your sleds. I know you've got a lot of them between your brother and your father. Uh, we would love to have some of that on here. Uh, next, we've got Steve Dickinson, a good friend of mine. Dickin uh, Steve Dickinson has a lot of really nice vintage Arctic cats, and he is from Berlin, New Hampshire. We see him at a lot of the shows. Um, Sam Field. Uh, yes, okay. Sam Field likes the idea of uh, the revamp revamping the Eland with a four-stroke. And in a few minutes, uh, Remy is going to show us his four-stroke four product uh, project. I'm sorry, I can't talk tonight. Yes. Uh, Remy has... Uh, done a four stroke conversion of a 1971 elan which is really nice and, and once we've gone through all these comments here we're just about done and we're going to uh have remy show us that but i wanted to just say hi to everybody who's saying hi to us we've got yeah. paul billado from gonick new hampshire thank you for coming on paul i think you've been on here before i see i recognize your name there uh george zanbelt from windsor ontario canada we've got paul noblock where is all the snow yes if you're in the northeast <laughs> not much snow. How are, you, how are you doing with snow up there, Remy? Do you guys have much snow up in Quebec? <laughs> no, not at this time. <laughs> yeah, same here. We've got about six inches of that. <laughs> it's pathetic. Yeah, I'm, I'm it's the same a, thing. I'm maybe an hour or more south of you. I'm just over the border in Vermont. But uh, just a few more comments to go over through here. Peter Chapel from Cuyahoga, New York. We have Brian Abrams, Lake George, New York. Paul Noblock, Wausau, Wisconsin. Francis Benson, uh, France. Okay, oh, now we're starting to get into some comments about the Eland. Francis says he loves the idea for the Eland, and I bet he's looking forward to having you fire that up and and take a look at that project you've got. Uh, let's okay. see, Alden Banks from New Brunswick, Canada. Diane Baker from New York in the Catskill Mountains. Thanks for coming on, Diane. We appreciate it. George Harum, uh, Harrison Chuck. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. But uh, George is from Kenora, Ontario, Canada, and he thinks a liquid-cooled Elan would be great uh, with more suspension travel. That's a great idea, George. What do you yeah, think about that, Remy? You like that? Um, idea? Go ahead. I want to keep. Yeah, it's a good idea, but maybe uh, with the four stroke, I don't think you need a, a liquid cool engine because this is a little cell that don't have a, a lot of performance, so it is not a big problem uh, uh, with this kind of sled i think but it's sure. it's, it's cuz uh, at the end it's the uh, the weight of the sled count too oh yes that's what accounts for the agility of the elan is how yes. light it was yeah absolutely absolutely uh just a few more here we've got uh, Jamie Duffy coming on we've got Rick Petruco from Cortland New York we have Rob Ramish from Ontario, first time viewer. Thanks for coming on, Rob. Patrick Good Goodrow, a good friend of ours from Averill, Mass. Pat is on here every week, and we'd like to have Pat on to show us some of his ski dues uh, and talk about his racing history. We're going to have him on very soon, possibly even next week, if I can talk him into it. Uh, Paul Billadeau. Okay, here's some con question, comments that Paul had about the Elan. He says, uh, they had a lot of cool slides back in the 60s and 70s. They should bring them back at an affordable price. I totally agree. Uh, Richard Murphy uh, wants to know where this show is based out of. I'm in the thriving metropolis of Derby Line, Vermont, right uh, on the Canadian border, right on the Quebec border. If I throw a rock off the edge of my property, it'll land in Quebec. If, in fact, that's how close I am to Quebec. And I don't know if if um, if Remy would see that in Quebec. He's probably 100 miles north of me. But, uh, yeah, it's right on the border of Quebec. Uh, Rick Libby <laughs> thinks a fuel-injected four-stroke Elan would be sweet with all the suspension upgrades. Yeah, suspension travel, I would think. A little more suspension travel than the old Elans. What do you think on that, Remy? Yeah, it's a good idea because uh, the buggy system is, uh, is a hold system. It was a good system, but a bit too hold. And we need uh, more comfort on the, these uh, little yes. shed. And the front suspension sure. have to be modified too. <laughs> yes, maybe some ski spreaders. and Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And A-arms and... Uh, Sure. And we've got Bill Cook on here. Uh, okay, Bill Cook is asking, isn't that what they're trying to do for the kids with the 120s? And yeah, I think in some ways. What do, what do you think, Remy? Uh, what's the question? Uh, he's thinking, as far as the ELAN project that we're talking about, isn't that what they're trying to do for the kids with the 120 sleds? With the 120cc uh, junior sleds that they've got. 
in some ways, I think that fills the, the ELAN spot. But the nice thing I'm thinking about the ELAN is that it was designed for adults and children. And and you, it, I, I don't know. I've never ridden one of those 120s. I don't know how agile that is in the deep powder. Do you have any thoughts on that, Remy? Or? 120s, he talked about the uh, the track. Yeah, yeah the, or uh, he talks about the track. Heard. Yeah, no, no, not a one hundred, not a one twenty inch track. About the one twenty cc uh, junior sleds, the youth sleds. Okay. Wondering if that would. Oh, uh, they the are too small for an adult. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's because yeah, it, they are very too small for an adult. Yeah, yeah, they're great for the kids though, but yeah, too small for an adult. And then we've got um, Ben Tucker yeah, for from the kids, Tunbridge. Yeah, for sure. Sure, Ben Tucker from Tunbridge, Vermont. Um, so yeah, let's um, let's go back to our conversation, um, Remy. Uh, I wonder if you'd take a take us on a little tour of your 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 Elan project that you have there. I think you're sitting on it, correct? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Just uh, switch the cam. Sure. Okay. And while he's turning that camera around, I've got oh. a link in the description okay. if you'd like to check out Remy's um, petition. Yeah. So uh, here's the engine. So uh, I've just removed the 247 uh, Rotax engine yep. and put the uh, 13 horsepower. Uh, it's a Honda copy. So uh, I've put the... Uh, a comet clutch on it. Yeah, they are almost ready to put it right there, and it works pretty well. So you don't have to to modify anything. Or and on the on the secondary uh, uh, clutch, I've put the Bra Yamaha Bravo uh, spring. They are stiffer, and you have a little better acceleration with this engine. And I uh, have weld an exhaust. And it goes right where the uh, two-stroke exhausts go. Oh yeah, and this is that's very simple to do. There's nice. a lot of more uh, of thinking than the uh, making. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, I imagine a lot of planning goes into that. Yeah, for sure. I can now, start it if you want to up? see it. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes, please. Yeah. They start better. They start very better than the first than, than the two stroke. That's very smooth. Yeah, that's eight move. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's very smooth. And I have a, a lot more torque with the uh, four stroke engine. Oh, yes, huh? more torque? Yeah, uh, a lot more. So if you have to pull uh, something uh, like I do, I'm pulling a water tank for my uh, sugar shack. Yes. And uh, I will see this uh, this falls, uh, fall, not falls, <laughs> this is uh, springs. I will yeah. see the springs, uh, how it works with, uh, with a water tank. Nice. And I bet that would be good for someone doing ice fishing, trying to pull a, a sled with all their ice fishing gear. I bet it would be forever. Yeah, that. this is the same things. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, good. Well, before we wrap it up, Remy, I'm going to show a, a video that you sent me of you riding this very sled. I'm going to show this to our friends. <laughs> My here. speed record. Yes, that's right. Let's take a look. <laughs> Yeah, there you have it. Well, cool. That was Remy on his four-stroke Elan project. And if you like the idea of Ski-Doo bringing back the Elan, um, sign sign Remy's petition. There's a link in the description where you can sign the petition, and he'll pass that on to the Ski-Doo people and see if we can't get something like that happening. That would be really nice. Um, yeah, any final thoughts, Remy, before we go? Uh, well, I will say thanks to all people who's watching uh, the podcast, and uh, thanks for uh, sharing and singing the petition. I think uh, together we can bring back the LN, but we need a lot of people who sign this and uh, 
I will make a call to the CEO of Bombardier to try <laughs> to uh, change his mind. Yeah, that would be amazing. That would be amazing. <laughs> I'd love to see that. And if they ever come back with it, we'll cover it on this this podcast. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Good. Yeah, we'll have you on and we'll cover it. We'll introduce it together. Wonderful. <laughs> well, good deal. I appreciate you coming on, Remy. Thanks, uh, thanks, Mike. And uh, have a good evening. All right. You as well. <laughs> All righty. Well, uh, yeah, that was great having Remy on. Um, now, the next item on our on our program here, we had David from OMC Warehouse scheduled to come on. But unfortunately, he's traveling and he's running late. So unfortunately, it's not an option for him to come on and join us tonight. But we're going to try to do something live with David tomorrow night. So if you're around at 9 p.m., uh, please check us out. We're going to try to do a tour of one of his other warehouses. If you uh, if you watched us a couple of weeks ago when we did a tour of one of his warehouses, that was a lot of fun. And he's got another warehouse filled with OMC sleds, even more sleds than the last one. Uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. So do check us out for that. Let's move on now to item number three. This is going to be Spencer Rins 1971 Articat Puma 440. Let me get that queued up here. Right here, let's take a look. So that is some footage that was sent to me by Spencer Wren a few years ago. That's his 1971 Puma 440. And that's what we're doing tonight. I know I've been showing a lot of my my footage that I've been taking uh, over the last bunch of years. I've been showing that a lot, but we're switching it up tonight. I'm going to be showing um, some footage that's been sent to me. This is uh, Tonight's uh, footage that we're looking at is all uh, footage from a project I was working on a few years ago and people were sending me some footage and I was uh, doing that in a project. So we're looking at that tonight. In future episodes, I've got a vault full of image uh, images and, and videos from uh, snowmobile shows I've been to over the years and we'll be getting back into that. But I figured we'd switch it up tonight and take a look. Now, next on the podcast, we're going to be looking at Roger Wenzel's 1970 Boa Ski. We're going to be looking at his footage of that. Before we do, though, I've got a funny story uh, a funny memory that I have of a boa ski back in the day. And I think it was kind of like this boa ski we're about to look at. I remember when I was in elementary school, we're going to be, we're talking here, maybe 72 ish, give or take. I was riding home on the school bus. We were going by somebody's house. They had a gravel driveway and there was a guy out there. This was like in, by the way, this was in October. And uh, because I remember the, there was still foliage on the trees, but it was, it was kind of the foliage had kind of passed. So there was no snow yet, but apparently this guy was eager to get on the snow and just couldn't wait anymore. And he was out on his gravel driveway 
with his boa ski doing donuts in the gravel driveway and we're going by the by there in the school bus and we thought it was the greatest thing ever we're all hooting and hollering and cheering him on and we just thought it was the coolest thing and it was a sled just like this one we're about to see here here's the uh rogers 1970 boa ski let's take a look Yes, that was Roger Wenzel's 1970 Boa Ski. Really cool video there. Uh, we want to switch gears. Let's take a look here at the menu, see where we are in the program. We're at item number five. We're going to see Ron Hall inducted into the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. This was back in 2019. Can you believe that was almost two years ago? Um, I'm sorry, I'm stuck on my interface here. Here we go. Uh, so yeah, let's take a look at that. And um, after his induction, I've got I was able to catch him for an interview, and we're going to play that right after it. So let's take a look at Ron Hall's induction into the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame in 2019. Ronald Hall inducted into the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame 2019. He began racing in 1970 on local upstate New York tracks. Ron was off at a factory production Thunderjet 440 in 1972. Had highest points for any Thunderjet in Mod 3 in USSA East. Began racing rough in later Attic Cat for the legendary team of old in 1973. 
Ron is still the only driver to win the Adirondack Cup twice. He won a Kilkenny Cup in Mod 1 at the 1975 Lancaster Grand Prix and took first place in Mod 3 at the 1975 World Series. He still holds the record for most USSA points ever in one season. Rob Hall still holds the record 15 straight feature wins in Mod 1. He wore gold bibs number 1, 3, 4, 8, and 22 during his racing career. In 1977, while racing in five different classes, Ron took 22 first place, 12 second, 7 third place, and 7 fourth place finishes. Ironically, in only his first year of racing in stock, Ron broke a spindle crashing into the wall at Eganville, Ontario, Canada on February 5, 1977, ending his amazing career and left the sport with over 150 first, second, and third place trophies in just seven years of racing. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ron Hall. If I could have just a few minutes of your time, yeah, I'm trying to think, you know, this week what I might say to everyone here, but uh, I'd like to honor some names, say some names that through my career have helped me out, just voice their name in this this uh, uh, Hall of Fame here, if you bear with me. Uh, my early years, and I started out, uh, never sat on a snowmobile until I was 27 years old. I started in with a, my boss, uh, the Courier Corporation was a part of a dealership in Syracuse, and uh, Phil Richardson and his bro uh, brother-in-law uh, were had a dealership in uh, in Syracuse. There, they sold, you know, the heyday of snowmobiles. They sold 1,500 new units a year back then. You know? And you go to <clears throat> when you went to Bloomdale and stuff, you would have 5,000 or better spectators. You'd have 880 entries. You know, it, it was. You know, it, Everybody here knows it was it was big back then, you know. And then uh, I got a ride with this snow jet there the next year, and uh, Ronnie Cornell and uh, uh, Vern Conway, Errol Marina, and Night Awake. And then from that, the next year, Bill Abel uh, called me up and wanted me to run a rub. <clears throat> and, you know, a good deal with Rupp. It took us a while to get it figured out, but uh, it turned out to be a good year with the Rupp. And uh, then that, that started our... It, he was sponsoring it through AMP Auto Parts, that's what he owned. And from there, we went on, that was the beginning of Able Racing, Able Team, Team Able Racing. And uh, from there, uh, you know, Herb Yancey, Chip Elwood, and I <clears throat> were racing, and all these names that I'm going to mention now are names that helped all three of us. And it's um, uh, Charlie Hemans and Al Conklin and my wife's uncle was our best man. He died at 42 with cancer. He was down helping me about every night down to my house. And uh, that, and then, of course, Bill, you know, he, you know, he worked night and day. He's still, he's still racing. Uh, he's 81, 82 years old. He's still racing in Star, uh, super modified cars. He's got two grandsons that are still racing. He's still, they're still doing it today. I don't know how, how he does it. You know? and, uh, and another, but person I want to mention is my head cheerleader, my daughter. <laughs> and, uh, and then I got this gal that's been following me around here for 57 years. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, anybody that's been in the race, and, you know, it's hard on a married life. You know, uh, she runs with us just about every week. Right. And our, two, and our two children too. Boy. We yeah. did it a family deal. And, and uh, yeah, yeah. And my son, he's got a thumb that's bent right backwards from building tracks. Yeah. <laughs> really good shot. I never seen anybody can bend a thumb backwards, but he does it. Yeah. Well, I, I sure appreciate this. I appreciate you guys having a, but this year. It's, it's just a marvelous idea. You know, it brings back a lot of nice memories to everybody. You know, nice. thank you so much. So that was, <clears throat> pardon me. That was Ron Hall inducted into the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame back in 2019. And I was able to catch him for a quick interview after the ceremony. Uh, let's take a quick look at that. My name is Ron Hall. I race snowmobiles uh, from uh, 1970 to 76, 77. Uh, I never was one for speed. I didn't like fast cars or anything like that. But uh, my next door neighbor, uh, Jimmy Fonger, which, uh, was an uh, excellent racer. Uh, I started going, hanging around with him and 
changing spark plugs at a race and stuff got interested in it, and it kind of caught on. I never set on a snowmobile until I was probably 27 years old, and uh, I uh, started out with skidoos for one year. Got a, uh, offered a ride on a snow jet uh, in uh, 73, I guess it was, and, and uh, did real good with that. And then uh, Bill Abel uh, from AMP Auto Parts called me up uh, for, to run a 73 Rough Magnum, and uh, uh, so I, I said okay, and uh, you know it sounded like a good offer. And we raced that and did real well with it. Uh, we ended up uh, uh, winning uh, Malone the Northeastern Championships at Malone, the half mile horse track, and. We went on to Boonville, and it was a 440, and we entered it in the 650 class at Boonville. They had the Adirond Adirondack Cup there, and uh, so I raced against all the 650s and uh, ended up winning it. Uh, later on and down the road, uh, Herbie Ancy was my teammate on, on, uh, on uh, Team Abel, and uh, he was he got second in that race. And uh, the next year, I ran the, uh, the Adirondack Cup in uh, 74. And uh, I, uh, they put it into the 440 class, but uh, we had prepared a 650 to go back after again. And I, I won the 650 class that year. I had a 650. I won it. But uh, so that was two years in a row that I won the 650 class there. But they moved it into the four. They were moving into the class with the most sleds. They, so uh, I didn't win the 440 that year. So the next year I had a uh, three super mods. I went back and they, I went back in 75 and won three super mod classes winning the cup again so i had i got i got two of the uh, adirondack cups at home and they're, they're they're over over six foot tall they're a, they're a big trophy wow. and uh, my prized possessions yeah. <laughs> but uh, that was that was uh, one of the you know high, highlights of my career i'd once uh, you know world series class classes and stuff but uh, one of probably one of the biggest highlights was uh, uh, they had a regular snowmobile program at Weechport, New York. Uh, they had the factories were there. They had a special uh, class that you qualified during the year. You had to win a, a 440 Supermod class to qualify for this. It was a 50 lap class that they put up quite a bit of money into. And uh, they left 10 positions open and the factories and stuff could come out and qualify. They had the twin track manners there and they had the Articat factories was there. And we raced a whole program all day long. Uh, you know, I raced a 250 class. I raced a 440 class, at least the 440X, and uh, you know normally, you know we had some light and tracks and stuff trying to go fast. So we, you know with all that racing and then plus the 50 laps, we, uh, my son, spent quite a few days building a heavy duty track. It was nothing, there wasn't anything trick track or anything like that. It was heavy, and you know for a trail riding event, you know, and that's what I raced all day long. And, and we ended up uh, they had 25 sleds. They were parked. Uh, it was a Le Mans start. They parked them on a 45 degree angle on the infield. And we back up against the grandstands, and the grandstands counted down, you know, nine, eight, seven, six, and some of the guys took off on four. <laughs> but so, anyways, I got over there, and you, you had to stick your tether switch on, and, and uh, you could have a mechanic pull it for you. And uh, my wife's uncle, he was, uh, you know, starting the sled for me, and we, we started off, and, and uh, I think it was 20, they had a, a lap counter, because it was a stock car track on, so you knew your how many laps you could completed. And uh, I think by the 20th lap, I lapped all the factories by that time. Wow. <laughs> but I went on. I went on to win it, and uh, it was a you know it was one of my hi highlights that I really enjoyed. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But, That's uh, amazing. Yeah. So that uh, you know just people you know they don't realize how many you know how much fun we had back then. Uh, the amount of people that would come to those races, you know, they didn't have the sports programs and stuff on television or the cables and the, all that kind of stuff. I mean, everybody you know, snowmobiling really hit with a crash, you know. I mean, people, you know, they had two snowmobiles. They might not have a car, but they had two yeah. snowmobiles, you know. They had they their priorities right. The whole families for the weekend, you know. And, and uh, you know, we would uh, race, and you'd, at Boonville, they'd have 880, uh, eight, 900 entries, entries, you know. And you come away from there with a win. You know, you, you knew you were real lucky, and you knew you had real good equipment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and uh, you had to have both. And there was a, a, a ball racing against the same guys. We, we got to be friends every week, you know, and you were – you were down to business and serious on the track, but then afterwards, you know, they're, you're the best of friends. The know? real community. Yeah. Good, yeah. good. Yeah. Well, good. Well, I, yeah. I really appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Yes, so that was Ron Hall back in 2019, inducted into the Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame. Now, this Eastern Snowmobile Racing Hall of Fame is growing very quickly. It's really catching on, and I hope that you will decide to join us this fall, this September, 
for the fifth annual induction ceremony. Let me put up some detail on that. That induction ceremony is going to be Saturday, September the 11th, 1 p.m. in Lancaster, New Hampshire at Crane's Snowmobile Museum. This is so much fun, guys. You really should consider coming out to join us uh, for this ceremony. Not only is there the ceremony itself, but before and after the ceremony, you can go into the museum, Crane's Snowmobile Museum, and look at the sleds. You can mix and mingle with with uh, Hall of Fame inductees, past, present, and future, as well as just a whole lot of people that are really into vintage snowmobiles. It's a really good time. And then once the ceremony is finished, everybody moves over to the Lancaster Motel for the, for the after party. And that's a really good time as well. And if you're planning to come any distance for the induction ceremony, the best place to stay, of course, is the Lancaster Motel. Because uh, if you're there at the Lancaster Motel, it's walking distance from the ceremony at the museum. Then you walk back over for the after party. And once the after party winds down, it's just a few steps away to your room and you can retire for the evening and just unwind and, and just relax. Um, so I hope you'll consider joining us uh, this September, September the 11th, 1 p.m. Eastern time, in Lancaster, New Hampshire at Crane Snowmobile Museum. It really is a good time. And I hope you'll decide to uh, join us with that. Before we get uh, in, back into the program here, let's look at some more comments that have come in. We've got uh, uh, Stacy and Art Fozier from Platkill, New York. Joe Kuhn from Elmira, New York. Jim Layton wants to know the top speed of that Elan. I wish I would have asked uh, Remy that question. That is a good question. I know, those, I know those things aren't speed demons, but just the same, it would be. I'd be curious to know what the top top end on that thing would be. Uh, Mike. McCallargy, I'm sure I'm butchering that, and I apologize. Uh, maybe Mike Mack is how what he goes by. Caseville, Michigan, 335 Olympic, outstanding. Oh, here we go. Remy's asking, is answering the question. He's headed at 59 kilometers per hour at 4200 RPM, and it can do some more. He thinks with some fine tuning, and he is constantly fine tuning that. So I'm sure he'll be able to get more uh, more than that out of it. Uh, Cindy Bernier reminds me of late uh, when he signed on with the Easy Go Polaris. Must be thinking about those 120s or those smaller sleds. I'm not sure uh, about that. But um, Jeff Nix is on. Uh, the snow would last longer if he went back to riding the vintage sleds, considering the amount of snow this year. Yeah, it's true. We're not getting much snow. And then, of course, we've got Jim. Gaccioni from Lee Mass. Thanks you, thank you for coming on, Jim. We really appreciate it. Uh, let's switch gears and get back into the program here. What have we got next? We've got item number six. And uh, let me remove that comment. There we go. Still getting used to this interface, but we are on item number six. We're going to look at Peter Spooner's 1972 Rupp Yankee Snowmobile. Let's pull that up. Here we go. Hey, this is uh, Pete Spooner, uh, Lowell, Maine. This is a little project of mine, uh, 1972 Rupp Yankee 440, 40 horsepower. I bought it, it's, it's pretty much original. I've, I've cleaned it up and kind of made a new seat for it. And uh, set of points, lined the gas tank, and I've been riding on the white stuff. She, she goes pretty good. I'm pretty pretty tickled with it. Uh, probably going to be selling it. Uh, I've got a spare 340 motor for it and, and also uh, a 340 chassis. Pretty much just parts at this point. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, maybe I'll show you a few of my other projects at some point. Talk to you later. Bye. Yeah, that's a really nice wrap, and I thank uh, thank Peter for sharing that footage with me a few years ago. Be curious to know, uh, now that a few years have passed, whether or not he uh, ended up selling that sled. Um, I have to check in on him about that at some point. 
Uh, now, before we get on to the next sled we're going to look at, I wanted to let you know that we are looking for an advertiser. And there's a number of ways that we can do that. If you've got a product or service that you think might be of interest to our vintage snowmobile audience, uh, we can go big budget or we can do go small budget. You probably noticed at the beginning of the program, we had that intro with the Mad Ramps and we had an extended video montage, uh, I'm sorry, image montage for the Lancaster Motel. We can certainly do something like that for you. Also, at the end of this program, we're going to run an extended video of that Mad Ramps product. So there's a lot we can do. Also, for someone who's on a much tighter budget, we can do something like this, where if you share some images with me, I can create a, a slide like this, and we can talk about your business for 60 seconds. And it's very economical to do something like that, extremely economical. So if you've got a product or service you feel might be of uh, interest to the viewers here on the Vintage Snowmobile Lovers uh, podcast, give me a call or uh, my number is in the description, as well as a link uh, for people who are interested in advertising. One last thing before we get to the next video. Uh, in a few weeks, it's going to be the Cranes Vintage Snowmobile Show. This is one of the better shows in the East. It's going to be Saturday, uh, February the 6th. I spoke with Paul Crane a week or two ago, and he confirmed that he's still planning to have it. Of course, there's going to be a lot of hand sanitizer in and outside the building, and we're asking people to wear a mask when they come, uh, but we're still going to go ahead with the show, and it is a lot of fun. Uh, 172 Main Street, Lancaster, New Hampshire. Registration is 8 a.m. Judging is at noon. It's also walking distance from the Lancaster Motel. So if you're coming from any distance, book your room now at the Lancaster Motel because uh, this event usually fills the motel. Book now if you're interested in coming any distance. And like I said, the motel is walking distance from the show. Um, so it's real easy to, to get there. And you don't have to bring a uh, your vehicle over to the show. You just walk over. So the last video we're going to look at tonight is David Dumont's 1973 Polaris TX. So that's David Dumont's 1973 Polaris TX. Now, if you have footage you'd like me to share on the program, uh, please send it to me. While I'm talking here, I'm going to put my email address on the screen. Where was that? Right uh, here, I think. is Yes, there's my email address. If you've got footage you'd like me to see, I would love to, uh, to air that on here for everyone to enjoy. Uh, if you're taking footage with your cell phone, please be sure to hold your camera horizontally for a wide shot, not vertically. It's very difficult to edit vertical footage, but uh, we would love to have some footage from you. Also, uh, you saw how I had Remy on here earlier live uh, from his home. If you would like to come on live, if you get some vintage snowmobiles that you'd like to share with the audience, or if you know of someone who does, uh, please have them contact me either at the email address at the bottom of the screen, or if you look in the description here, I've got... Uh, a phone number, or there's a number of different ways to reach out to me if you uh, you or someone you know uh, would like to come on the program uh, live. And that's one of the things I really like about this is uh, the ability to bring someone on live. I think that's really exciting to, set, to have someone on here live and in real time, uh, and the audience can ask them questions and we can interact. Um, it's just a really cool way to experience this vintage snowmobile hobby. Uh, and I hope that you will consider... Uh, coming on the program one way or another, either with some footage or coming on live at some point. So uh, that's pretty much it for the evening. Before we close, I'm going to give you one last look at the Mad Ramps product. I thank you so much for coming on uh, and spending some time with me tonight, and we will catch you on the other side. Happy New Year, everyone. It's the ultimate combination of simplicity and ingenuity. The newest way to load unload and transport your ATV or UTV 
The Mad Ramps Pivoting Ramp System. Made in the USA and engineered for strength and durability. Maneuver through tight places and over rugged terrain with plenty of ground clearance. No licensing, no ongoing maintenance costs, and no storage hassles like trailers. Won't slip or move like conventional ramps. Free up more cargo space in the bed of your truck. Securely connects to your truck's receiver hitch. Easily extends for safe loading and unloading. Seamlessly retracts for highway and off-road travel. DOT approved in all 50 states and Canada. Quickly disconnects in under a minute. A unique space-saving storage system. The Mad Ramps Pivoting Ramp System. Go farther. Go faster. Go safer. When you order using the link in the description, I'll send you three free vintage snowmobile DVDs. When you order using the link in the description, I'll send you three free vintage snowmobile DVDs.